Hi everybody, it's Marcus Collins with MA Properties with a Lexington Market Update. So, what I thought I would do in this video is give you an overview of what we saw in the Lexington Market in that 2020 timeframe, looking a little bit historical too, but then what I will also do is give you my predictions for 2021. So, let's get started. First thing, um, this is all covered in the Lexington Market Review 2020-2021. Within this, we have lots and lots of stats about what happened in the market. We covered the single family market, luxury, new construction, condominium, and then we get our crystal ball out to say what does this mean in terms of the housing market moving forward. So if, you did, if you're in Lexington, you should have got one of these in the mail. If you're not in Lexington or you didn't get one in the mail or you don't remember, please reach out to us. We can get you another copy. It's also on our website as well. So there are lots of ways for you to uh, get this information. But having said that, let's kind of get started with what's happening in the market. So first thing, let's take a look at single family homes. This graph is the inventory levels for Lexington. Um, what matters is not the absolute numbers with this one, it's really the shape of the graph. Um, as you can see in that 2013 timeframe, we saw a dramatic reduction in inventory levels. The reason for that was buyers becoming more confident after the crash. So the crash 2007, 8, 9 really was still working its way through the system until that 2012, 2013 timeframe. And it was almost as if a light switch went on in 2013. Buyers all of a sudden got the confidence to come back into the market. And lo and behold, what that meant was the inventory levels dropped dramatically, as you can see. That continued till 2019. 2019, if you remember back to that, pre-COVID clearly, um, there was lots of discussion about the market correcting. Was there going to be a housing correction? What that meant was that sellers thought, I should put my home on the market just in case house, just in case house prices go down. Buyers saying, maybe I should hold off a little bit buying because housing prices may go down. And so what we saw at that time was an increase in the number of listings, somewhat sluggish buyers, and so inventory levels increased. And that's what you can see in that 2019, the higher figures for 2019 versus 17 and 18. Uh, 2020 came along and it kind of all shifted completely. Um, and inventory levels are, are, are reduced in 2020 than they were for in 19. But let me talk more about COVID uh, in the next few slides. So very interesting to look at home sales. Your eye is immediately drawn to the 2020 number, which is very high. But to understand that, we need to look a little bit historically of what happened. If you can see prior to the 2020 uh, peak, the, the other peak was in 2015, and the number of home sales has been declining since. The reason for that was uh, sellers being somewhat reluctant to put their houses on the market. A couple of reasons. Number one, it's a very strong housing market, and, and a seller is also a buyer, and it's very tough to buy in this market. Um, if you're buying, for example, if you're in Lexington and you're looking to buy in an Arlington, for example, the next time, town down. Tough to buy in Arlington, therefore, I'm not really in a position to sell. A lot of sellers as well thinking they would stay in their home, take advantage of the house price appreciation we've seen in the town over the last few years. And so overall, we saw a reduction in the number of sellers coming on the market, the number of listings, um, and therefore the number of home sales declined. That um, in 2019, we saw a shift now. We saw more listings, but somewhat sluggish buyer demand. And so as you can see, the 2018, 2019 numbers were about the same. Even though we saw more listings in 2019, we didn't see as many buyers in the market. Now, along comes 2020, everything changes. Um, and as you can see, we saw a lot of sellers putting their homes on the market and a large number of buyers in the market able to absorb that excess inventory. And so that's why we saw a large increase in the number of homes in 2020, a consequence really of many sellers being somewhat too reluctant to sell in the years previously. And so 2020 came along when they saw the very buoyant market, they brought their homes on the market. We don't see this shape of the, this curve in very many towns. Certainly if you look at the towns around, you see a relatively flat picture in terms of house sales. So Lexington, a little bit of an anomaly 
because of that, you know, the historical uh, effect that we've seen. Average days on the market is an interesting metric to, to give again give you a sense of buyer confidence, really. Um, and you can see it's relatively static in 2019 through 2020. Sell price to list price ratio, again, slight uptick. Again, a good metric of buyer confidence. Our buyers feeling confident about buying in the town. We've seen that number around about 98, 99% dipped up to 100% in 2020. Um, so a relatively strong market. Comparison to some other towns, Arlington, for example, which is a much more of the house prices are somewhat lower there. That number is about 103, 104%. But overall, 100% is a very high number. Um, so as you, and you can imagine a, a strong town. In terms of average prices, um, we saw a you know, definite rise. Same is true of median uh, prices too. Although a little bit of a caveat with this because we did see a shift in the price distribution, sales price distribution. And what that did is it tended to pull up both the average and the median because of essentially a large number of, of more expensive homes coming, selling, coming on the market and selling. And so this large increase in, in average and median home prices somewhat distorted because of that shift in distribution. If you look at it from some other metrics, some other ways to kind of calculate that uh, price appreciation, around about four to five percent price appreciation, real price appreciation in the town. So less than you see, for example, here in the median price, which has been somewhat skewed. So about three to four to five percent is what we would anticipate in terms of price appreciation throughout 2020. It's interesting to look at cumulative sales to get a sense of quite what COVID did to the market. So what this graph is, is a, um, a weekly snapshot of how many homes went under agreement, looking at 2019 versus 2020. I look at under agreement as opposed to sale date because there's a six week or so delay or lag between a home going under agreement and actually selling. And I wanted to back that out. So this is, even though this is cumulative sales, it's actually a measure of cumulative going under agreement, if you like. But what's interesting is that the blue is 2020 and the pink color, uh, orange color is 2019. You can see, and if, I, if you can see my cursor as I kind of run it through it, you can see a relatively steady rise um, in 2019, as you would expect, strong spring market, less sales in, in the summer, fl slight, slight flattening of the curve, and then an increase as we get to the fall market. But as you can see with the blue, which is the 2020 cumulative sales, by about mid-March, the number of listings coming on and therefore the number of sales really had dried up. They, they, they did stop. And you can see a flattening of that curve in that March, April timeframe. Once we got to week two or three of May, homes started coming back on the market. Sellers felt confident enough, buyers were out, um, and so the home, the sales market increased. And as you can see, the number of homes coming on the market increased. And as you can see, the shape of that gra uh, graph went back to normal, really. Um, and then by the time we got to at the end of the year, we had more sales in 2020 than we did in 2019, which is what you can see. So overall, a very strong picture for 2020. A little bit skewed in terms of the number of home sales because of that inventory that was kind of ready to come on the market. We're just waiting for the right opportunity and 2020 gave it that right opportunity. That's single family. Um, I look at luxury, I thought I would look at that because it does begin to explain a little why we saw uh, that change in median and average prices that is somewhat distorted. So, uh, home sales again. I should explain, um, for us, luxury is over $2 million. We picked that number, it seems an, an arbitrary number, but uh, that's what our definition of uh, luxury sale is. So these are home sales over $2 million. Um, home sales, as you can see, rising in 19, rising again, very strong uh, in 2020. So. Lexington definitely seen as a, a very desirable destination for those uh, luxury homes, so over $2 million homes. Um, days on the market, a slight reduction, uh, 2020 versus 2019, and certainly a reduction uh, over what we've seen historically. So it's at almost the lowest level we've seen now for a long time. Uh, conversely, a high, high uh, sale price to list price ratio again, 
confidence um, by the buyers in terms of, um, of the market for a, for a luxury home. Um, in terms of what the distribution of luxury homes, it's interesting to look at that. You know, we go all the way from 2 million to, to as high as it goes. Um, and that's changed very much over, over the years. Um, you can see back here, I have 17, 18, 19, and 2020. The big shift we've seen is clearly more homes selling in those higher price points. Appreciation drawing, pulling that through as well, but also confidence in the builders in that they can build at this price point. Confidence in the sellers of those luxury homes that they can sell at that price point too. So we're seeing more luxury homes listed, listing and therefore selling. But the big difference we saw 2019 through to 2020 was that huge, big increase in the 2.5 to $3 million price tag. That's really what shifted the price average and median because of that large increase in the number of homes selling coming on the market and selling between 2.5 and $3 million. So that's really what, what was going on. So, you know, a quick kind of summary of what's happening in, in the market. It's interesting to look at what's the dr key drivers for the market right now. And to do that, it's worth looking at demographics. Um, this is the um, number of people in each age bracket. Actually done in 2015, we should get an update uh, this year, hopefully, you know, with the census being done last, last year. Um, what's interesting is the two increases. So it's by age group and number of how many people in each age group. There's two interesting areas there. There's the, you know, the top bar, which I've highlighted in yellow, and then the lower bar, again, highlighted in yellow. The top bar is the baby boomers, those children that were born just after World War II, now getting to retirement. The lower bar, the millennials, those are the first time home buyers. So now what you see is the downsizers, the baby boomers who are now downsizing, and the millennials all looking for, guess what, a similar home. Um, a downsizer, you know, perhaps in a Lexington or a Winchester and a Belmont, a higher priced um, town, looking to move into a lower priced home um, in, for example, an Arlington or Somerville, and where the home prices, the homes are smaller and therefore the prices are less. Um, that puts a lot of pressure on, on buying in, for example, the Arlington market. As I mentioned before, the sale price to list price ratio in Arlington 103% this year, slightly reduced from what we've seen previously. So tough to buy in that market. And that explains some of the reluctance of sellers to, to sell or maybe inability to sell because it's tough to buy where they're looking to move to. So that, the, the, the downsizers and the first time home buyers driving the market, of course, the first time home buyers allowing people to move, moving into the market, allowing people to kind of move up as well. So that's, those are the key drivers that we see in the market today. Um, in terms of mortgage interest rates, um, this was the predictions uh, for earlier this month, as you can see, they're really at very low numbers. It did surprise me when I pulled this information to see that we are far, far lower um, today than we were even two or three years ago. Um, and actually the predict some, predict some predictions now, late, latest predictions that may be even lower. But really mortgage interest rates, allowing two things really, allowing buyers to be able to buy, but also existing homeowners to refinance. And we certainly saw in 2020, a lot of strain on the financing systems as people worked out how to work from home. The mortgage companies struggled by the sheer volume of, of work that they had to do with refis and uh, people buying homes. And so we saw some delays in 2020 in closings because the, the banks basically couldn't keep up with working out how, how, how their staff could work from home and so on. Um, predictions for, for those rates are, are to remain low. Um, I've not seen any predictions that says that will increase. And either way, the number is so low, even if it were to increase up a little bit, it really will have no impact on the market. So there really is no hindrance to today's buyers, with the exception of some confidence, you know, depending on what the economy will do to actually come into the market. So in terms of 2020, 2021, what can we expect in terms of the predictions? So if we look at it from a buyer's perspective and a seller's perspective, perhaps it may, get, may maybe put some structure to it. In terms of, uh, of buyers, a lot of buyers are looking to move out of inner cities, out of condominiums with their shared space, looking to, to have that little bit more space. 
And so the predominant single family home market in, in Arlington, most homes are single family in the town, has fared very, very well. And that will continue. Certainly our experience here now in the first part of 2021 is that there are an awful lot of buyers still in the market. Um, and that will continue uh, moving forward. So very strong in picture in terms of the number of buyers. So th that looks to continue too. In terms of the number of sellers, now is a great time to put your home on the market, of course, because there are lots of buyers around. A little bit difficult, of course, to move into your new home, especially if you're looking to stay very much within the Massachusetts or the greater Boston area. If you're looking, if you're willing or, or looking to move much further afield, perhaps further out past 495, maybe New Hampshire, perhaps even Florida, um, then there's a lot of opportunity to, to capitalize on a very strong buyer's a strong buyers market, a strong set of buyers in the market. It is very much a seller's market right now. So if the capability is there, then now's a great time to sell. So I anticipate we will see perhaps not as many sales as we saw in 2020. Um, that was a very high number, a lot of slack being taken up from the market. We may not see that number at that level, but certainly we'll see a strong seller market because it's a strong seller's market and they will begin to move in. You know, people want to, want to bring that, take advantage of that and move into the, bring their home on the market. Um, um, so similar numbers to what we saw perhaps in that 18, 19, perhaps not as high as we saw in 2020 in terms of the number of um, sales that we will see or the number of listings that we will see. So that's uh, the 2020 market overview and 2021 predictions for Lexington. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.